I heard there was this podcast, yo, about something funny like wrestling and so, and you really care about wrestling, don't you? There are drop kicks and leases all over the board, and then something called the Wrestling Hold. It's a super duper fun podcast about wrestling. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. Well, Fro and Bill and maybe a guest or two is here to hold your hand and guide you through a podcast about wrestling. We have a lot of extreme fun and that we're without a gun because I needed something to rhyme fun with. That wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show. Well, sit your behinds gently down and listen to our podcast sound and try to guess this week's pro question. You win a lot of cool things and also help Bill with his bill, Bill Bills. That's a super duper fun competition. That wrestling show. 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 That wrestling show That wrestling show That wrestling show Hello, everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. I'm your host, Bill. Fro could not be here this week due to uh, technological issues, we'll call it. I'm picking up random stuff. My uh, One of my nephews just came around. Uh, this is... The season premiere of that wrestling show, and we are in 2018, and this week going to talk about Wrestle Kingdom 12. The event took place earlier today, depending on where you live. Um, I know I got up real early in the morning for this event, so going to be talking about that, going to be talking about other wrestling news, uh, and other stuff. Now one thing you might notice right off the bat is the way that this episode sounds differently. Because during the holiday break, I got a microphone. Yes, I actually got a microphone for Christmas. Uh, And I got it from my parents. So I want to thank my mom and my dad for buying that. It was very out of the blue. Very surprising. 
So I have a microphone, an actual microphone, so that means that for those of you who are like, oh, this isn't a real podcast. Well, it's now a real podcast, so you gotta, you gotta deal with it. Uh, this is a, like I said, this is a very loaded show this week, so, uh, let's start it off with, like, with our, with a new segment that we brought up in the last episode, which was welcoming our new members into our Facebook group, and, uh, during the break we had, uh, about four or five people, uh, join our Facebook group, so I want to welcome them at this time they are shannon frazier margaret johnston richard martinez and debbie gardner pruitt i hope you uh all enjoy being on our facebook group and you could join our facebook group as well just go on to facebook and type in in the search bar that wrestling show fan group and you are right there and you can join us and discuss anything you want in the world of professional wrestling. So, um, a very unusual situation took place last weekend at AIW, Absolute Intense Wrestling. They're an indie promotion out of the Cleveland, Ohio area. They had a show this past Friday night, and one of... Well, actually, the main guest, the main person that was going to be at that show was none other than Sid Vicious, uh, Psycho Sid. Well, the day of the show, AIW, app, uh, they announced that Sid was not going to be at the show. And this is such a weird situation, like the reasoning. Uh, because there is audio of the phone conversation out, but I'm not going to play the audio. Um, I'm, instead, I'm going to read the re- release statement that they had put out the day of the show on December 29th. And I'm going to read this to you guys so you understand how weird this is. We have some bad news to report. Our greatest fears have come true. Sid did not board his flight this morning. After several phone calls, he finally answered when we used Swoggle's phone to call. Sid claimed Donald Trump's travel ban prevented him from boarding his flight to Cleveland this morning because of an unpaid speeding ticket, and he claimed this is new government policy since he didn't have his passport, even though he was traveling within the United States and is a United States citizen. We recorded his cancellation call just so there is proof of all this, and we will do our best to play the audio tonight or on a future episode of our podcast. We apologize to all of the fans who were excited to meet Sid tonight, and unfortunately, this is something 100% out of our control. We invested quite a bit of money in this appearance, and we have now lost out on close to $1,000. We will never get back on airline tickets, hotels, and merchandise we had made for Sid. We are going to try and do our best to find a replacement and plan on spending the rest of the day making phone calls and trying to get somebody there to replace Sid. Well, one person that did manage to show up was EC3, Ethan Carter III, and he and Gregory Iron had a real fun time um, with Sid not being there. They both dressed as Sid in the uh, in the respective matches that took place that night, and EC3 even signed autographs on Sid's picture, which I thought was a little funny, saying, Sorry, Sid couldn't be here. Signed, EC3. So, uh, like I said, that's a very weird, very weird situation that took place. Um there um and if that is true that is like one of the weirdest stories that um (laughs) i mean just just very weird it just is um that could be an interesting discussion for another day is you know what's the weirdest cancellation for a wrestler you've ever heard of so um speaking of wrestling 
uh, staying with this past weekend, we had sort of an emotional moment because the son of Brian Pillman, Brian Pillman Jr., had his first professional wrestling match uh, over the weekend in Indianapolis, and he took to Instagram, and uh, he posted a picture of him of himself after the match, and then he posted this, and I'm going to read this uh, Instagram message, and if this just does not get to you, if this does not want you to root for the kid, then I don't know what's wrong with you. I really don't. So, Brian Jr. wrote, While I am normally a man of my, uh, a man, ugh, sorry, let me start that again. While I am normally a man of many words, I just don't know how I could sum up the way last night made me feel using only text. So here is a picture. Maybe it's worth a thousand words. Maybe it's worth more. Maybe less. But whatever you take from it just now that or just know that the way I felt in this photo is the most alive I've ever felt in my entire life. I've received a lot of attention and congratulations after news broke of my independent debut, and I am blown away by the love from all of you. Just this once, though, I ask you for a favor. Whether it's a comment on Instagram, a direct message, or a tweet, I don't want it sent straight to me. I want you to type it all out just as you normally would, but this time before you hit that send button, I want you to send it to Brian Pillman. Not Brian Pillman Jr., not Brian Pillman the second. No, I mean Big Brian, Brian Pillman Sr., the Hollywood blonde Brian Pillman, the loose cannon, my father. Whether it's a prayer, a mental note, or just a written letter, I want you to send it up above and let him know how you feel. How you feel about what he left behind for you. For me, for us, his legacy. Because had he not given every ounce of life force that he had for this world, had he not made every heartbeat count, then I certainly wouldn't be here today, and of course, professional wrestling just wouldn't be the same as we all know and love it. Thank you, everyone, for reaching out to him. And thank you to Scott Romer for capturing this moment. Thank you, Dad, for this amazing gift called pro wrestling. I've said this in the past, and I will say it again, and I probably will continue to say it on and on. There aren't that many people for me, for me that... I generally will root for because you know wrestling is such a weird it's such a weird profession because you have people who come and go and you know you, you see somebody for the first time and you're like oh I like this person but you don't get to really know them that much this is an exception Brian Pillman Jr is somebody that a lot of us have known since we were kids, when his dad was a wrestler. And the fact that he has decided to take this job, this profession, to be a professional wrestler is something absolutely amazing. And I could see the honest sincerity in the kid... <laughs> And I really want him to succeed. I really, really do. If he, you know, stays healthy, if he goes at it the right way, I think we're going to have an, a, another successful second generation wrestler. And I think that's what we're going to get with Brian Pillman Jr. Um, I, I have not seen... His first match, but I'm sure um, the footage will come up on YouTube down the line. And we'll see much more of Brian Pillman Jr. in a professional wrestling ring. And I really hope for the best for him. Because Lord knows he's been through a lot in his young life. And I think this is the way for him to do it. Okay, Chikara Wrestling. 
They got a lot going on in 2018. They've put a lot of shows out that they're going to do in 2018. And it looks like it's all of their Philadelphia shows. Um, There's probably going to be many more shows that they're going to put out uh, during this year, 2018. Uh, So if you want information on these events, you could go to ChakaraPro.com and click on Events Season 19 and you're right there. But I'll give you guys a quick rundown of the events that are going to take place this year in Philadelphia for Chikara. We'll start on January the 28th. That's only three and a half weeks away with Beware the Snowman. Then on February 17th, during President's Day weekend, it is National Pro Wrestling Day. Then on February 21st is their first Hour of Power of the Year, so keep an eye out for that. Um, March 17th is Stage 1 of the Young Lions Cup 14. Stage 2 is March 31st. April 14th will be the Tag World Grand Prix 2018. April 28th will be Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. May 5th is the Infinite Gauntlet. May 26th, they're going to celebrate their anniversary with Anniversario, Heroes Shed No Tears. June 9th will be the second annual Johnny Kid Invitational. June 23rd is Go Eat Worms. July 28th, Egg Monsters from Mars. August the 11th, Chikarasaurus Rex, A Deadly Secret. September the 22nd, It Came from Beneath the Sink. October the 13th, Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. October 27th, La Loteria Litao, which is a fun event. I'll get into that when we get closer to uh, that show at the time. November 10th, Don't Go to Sleep. November 24th, which is Thanksgiving weekend, Cybernetico, Seven Man Army. And on December the 8th, I'm going to presume that's its season finale, is Let's Get Invisible. Uh, tickets for all those events are going to be on sale. Um, of course, the one on January 28th, Be Where the Snowman, is a. Uh, the tickets are available right now. Just go to ChikaraPro.com and you can check that out. During New Year's Eve, because I actually decided to stay home, I did not feel like going out on New Year's Eve, um, I watched some Powerbomb TV and I watched Beyond Wrestling and that was an absolute blast. I had a fun time watching that show. Um, Heavy Lies the Crown was the name of the show. A very good event with the main event being a fans bring the weapons match between Joey Janela and David Starr. That was quite the interesting match, to say the least. Um, but it was I had fun watching that show, um, the majority of the show. I, I, I missed, like, one match, but that was really about it. Um, other than that, it was worth the watch. I think I'm going to watch more of uh, Beyond Wrestling in the very near future. Um, I know they got an event coming up, I think January 27th in Philadelphia and then the 28th in Worcester, Mass. So uh, keep your eye out on both of those shows in the upcoming weeks. Had a little bit of a scare Monday night with uh, Enzo Amore, of course, he was scheduled to defend the Cruiserweight title this past Monday night on Raw against Cedric Alexander. However, he had to go to the hospital, and from the reports that had been released is he had flu-like symptoms, so they were not going to let him compete whatsoever um, on that show. And for the safety reasons, I totally understand what WWE did. I mean, it sucks that, you know, he got sick and couldn't um, compete. But you want the safety and the well-being 
of everybody, you know. And Enzo right now is one of their stars. Uh, I'm not going to say one of their top stars, but he's one of their stars. And you don't want one of your stars, especially one of your champions, to, you know, be put out in a situation where it could be a lot, lot worse. So I think WWE made the right call. And we'll just have to see where the story... Because it, it was in real life. That actually happened. But... It'll just be interesting to see how things work out on TV with Enzo and the Cruiserweight title. Remains to be seen. Uh, Speaking of Raw, I want to tell you guys this. Um, I downloaded an app before we went on our uh, little holiday break. And I am absolutely in love with this app. It is called Stardust. And... I've done some reviews of movies and TV shows. I actually did a re- my own little like quick review of Monday Night Raw. And I think that's what I'm going to be doing from now on. Is on the Stardust app. Um, I'll give like a quick one minute thought on Monday Night Raw. What I thought was good. What I thought was bad. Uh, if you have the Stardust app. You could follow me. Just type in BoBull4. That or Bull Bull Zero Four, and you are right there, and you can check out not only that review but many other reviews that I have done. Um, not not only of wrestling, but of you know TV shows and movies as well. So go check that out. It is Stardust. You could get it on uh, your iPhone or your Android phone, and you're good to go. So, a few weeks ago, Fro and I, we discussed the Mixed Match Challenge, uh, and the teams were slowly, well, yesterday they were starting to be announced. As of this recording, we have three teams announced for the Mixed Match Challenge, and, uh... Here are the three teams. The first one is a very interesting one. Braun Strowman and Alexa Bliss. Wow, how did that get together? Very interesting. Um, The second team that was announced yesterday was Bobby Roode and Charlotte Flair. And the third team, which was just announced prior to uh, the starting of this recording... Finn Balor and Sasha Banks are the third team. So we have three teams right now for the Mixed Match Challenge. And, of course, that's going to be on Facebook. And that starts January the 16th at 10 p.m. So I'll give at least the first one a try just to see... um, you know who you know what I think of it and if I think it's any good but this is WWE's attempt at a live show on Facebook and we'll just see how it works out from there speaking of WWE and products I okay I have to I have to tell you guys this story this is a weird I I say weird a lot I know but um this, this story might be for you wrestling fans out there who have kids. And your kids are in a situation where, you know, I don't want to take my vitamins and all that. Well, WWE announced recently that they have now for sale WWE Children's Multivitamin Gummies. Uh, these are designed for children under 13, and the vitamins are shaped like the WWE and Universal Championships, respectively, and they come in three delicious flavors, cherry, grape, and raspberry. Uh, these vitamins are available only at Giant Eagle stores, And they are only available to any of you who live in these following states. Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Indiana, and Maryland. So if you, uh, 
if you have a kid and you want to buy them some multivitamin gummies, uh, go right ahead and get some WWE uh, vitamin gummies. Uh, if you can't, if you don't live in any of those areas, however, uh, not all is lost. You can also get these on Amazon, and you can get them on the official website, GuardianGummies.com. Um, a seventy pack is eight ninety nine. A one hundred eighty pack is seventeen ninety nine, and a two gummy pack is only 99 cents so boy do you, uh, do you remember the hulk hogan vitamins i mean i tried those as a kid and i never really got into them but wwe trying the gummy mark or you know the the vitamin market again so roh has streaming service that they announced um recently as it, this has been revealed or has been talked about for a while that they're going to try a streaming service and they are going to release it in 2018 or they're going to start it up in 2018. Don't know when it will be released, but they are calling it Honor Club. That's the name of the service. Uh, they have a little catchphrase, which is Honor Club. It's more than a network. So be interesting to see how that works out i'm looking forward to this uh hope it goes on the roku which i'm pretty sure it will uh the ring of or the women of honor they're you know slowly getting prepared for the the tournament to crown their first women of honor champion uh delirious and mandy leon were in japan recently and they announced that four uh women from the stardom roster are going to appear in Ring of Honor. They're going to be in the tournament. They include Mayu Iwatani, Hana Kimura, Kagetsu, and HZK are going to be in that tournament to crown the first Women of Honor champion. So it should be very interesting how that goes. Uh, New Japan, they made big waves Yesterday, um, because they announced that they're going to be coming to American game consoles with PlayStation's, uh, PlayStation 4's release of Fire Pro Wrestling World. Um, this is really exciting news. Um, according to Paul Jordan of PWInsider.com, um... This will be released in the summertime. It will feature stars of New Japan. It'll also have new moves and a Young Lion story mode. Um, I saw the roster. It's you're gonna get the big guns for New Japan: um, Okada, Tanahashi, Naido, Omega. You're gonna get everybody there. Um, of course, Fire Pro Wrestling World was released earlier this year on, or last year, I should say, on Steam, and I've heard nothing but great reviews about that, so it is very, very interesting that New Japan going again for, you know, the the U.S. market, and I think they're doing the right thing by going through with this. All right, so this morning... Uh, there was a little event called Wrestle Kingdom 12 that took place at Tokyo, Japan. Um, big, big show. I'd heard, or I'd read over 30,000 people had attended this event. I got up a little bit late, not, not too late, so I did not catch the, the New Japan Rumble. So you're going to have to pardon me on that. I, I caught like maybe, maybe the last half of that match. Um, but in that match, uh, it, it came down to Cheeseburger and Masahito Kakihara. And Kakihara 
Kakihara, pardon me, got the victory in the New Japan Rumble. So, that was the pre-show match that set up the main show. So, now we get to the main show, and I have my grades um, from all the matches that took place. I don't... I want to, I don't think any, you know, like CBS or ESPN did, um, well, let me, let me check, actually, hold on, um, okay, yeah, there, okay, there are grades, so I'll have something to compare, um, to compare to here, and you guys will be able to hear, um, their thoughts as well, um, so, let's get into it, the, the, the main show, I should say. And the first match was the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title match, which was the Young Bucks against Rapongi 3K of Sho and Yo. This was a good opening match. Um, this was... Good opening match, and this was a good way for uh, Sho and Yo, who had made an excursion in the past to the U.S. for Ring of Honor, um, to you know basically show what they've got on a world stage. And I thought they did a pretty good job in this match. The story that I could see from this one or, or what I could tell from this story was th- the Young Bucks working on the back of show. And this, to me, was not your typical junior heavyweight tag title match. Where, as in the past, up until last year, you probably would have had a lot of high-flying spots here you really didn't have that, which is pretty good. Um, just good, solid wrestling, told a very good story. I was really impressed with Sho and Yo. I think that's going to be a team that um, you know has a lot of potential. I see them winning or being junior tag champs multiple occasions, Young Bucks really was... They they just were good in this match. They led Rapongi 3K in this tag match, and it was a really good match, a fun opening match. It didn't need to be the high-spot extravaganza that I'm sure a lot of people would think that it would be, and it didn't. And it ended up being a real good match, a solid opening match for me. I gave this match a B. Uh, CBS Sports gave this a B+. Plus. ESPN, uh, they did not have grades for this um, show. I'm, 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 I'm going to double-check just to be sure. Um, but it doesn't look like they had any grades on this. No, it doesn't. Yeah, they didn't do grades on this one, which is a little disappointing because that's sort of the fun part of you know watching the rest, you know, these wrestling shows nowadays. Since you know I've started doing a grade system, is you know coming up with your own thoughts, your own grades on this. I gave this a B. CBS Sports gave this a B plus. So the next match was the 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 gauntlet match for the never open weight six man tag team titles. And to go into the rules real quick, uh, two teams start. Once a team has been eliminated, the next team comes, and it keeps going until the last team wins. And the champs have the advantage because they are the last team to go into this gauntlet match. So, the match starts with uh, with Suzuki Goon of Taichi Taka- Takahashi Izuki 
or Iazuka and Zack Sabre Jr. They fought Michael Elgin and War Machine. And, you know, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I, I really wasn't sure how the order was going to be, which is, again, another nice thing about a match like this is you don't know the order. Um, I'm grading the in, the entity, the entire match. I'm not going to grade it by bit by bit because, you know, that's not what I do. Uh, it was an okay beginning. It was a good beginning. You know, you had Suzuki Goon being Suzuki Goon, um, which I thought was good, and they eliminate Michael Elgin and War Machine uh, in that first set. So the next set was the members of Chaos, Beretta, Tomohiro Ishii, and Toru Yano. They were the next team that came out. And this was a quick elimination because Yano uh, did the comedy spot here, and he was able to pin his former partner, Iazuka, and that eliminated Suzuki Goon from the match. So the next team that came out was Rusuka Taguchi, Juice Robinson, and Toji Makabe. This went a little longer. Um, I, I liked this part. I thought this was a good part of the match. And the ending was another comedy spot, but this one was... You know, it served a, a good purpose. Uh, Taguchi was going for, you know, his finishing move. He was going to go for the hip check. But when he went, Yano ducked. Yano got a schoolboy pin on Taguchi. And that eliminated them from the match. Which leads to the final set um, for the never open weight six-man tag titles, the Bullet Club. Bad Luck Fale and the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, they dominated this part for a little bit, but Chaos managed to make a comeback, and Beretta ended up getting the winning fall in this, and Beretta, Ishii, and Yano are the new never open weight six-man tag team champions. In a show... Where there were a lot of good to great matches, this was this was my least favorite, but only because of what the situation was. I gave this a C. It doesn't mean it was a bad match. It wasn't a bad match, but if you're looking for, you know, anything to skip, this might be the one to skip, but like I said, it's not that bad of a match. Uh, CBS Sports gave this a C+. Plus. They're a little bit more generous than I am so far. Next match was Kota Ibushi against Cody Rhodes, and boy, was this one a surprise as far as how this had uh, presented itself. I, I, I didn't think I didn't think, you know, the match was going to... I thought it was going to be good, but I didn't think it would be that good. Um, but Cody and Coda just went right at it. There were some good spots in this. There was one point where early in the match, Coda accidentally knocks out Brandy, and he has this conservative, like, he picks her up, and it's like, he, he's probably trying to take her to the back, but... Cody knocks him down, and Cody and Brandy have a laugh. It's like, oh, we fooled him. We got him real good. Um, this was just a very, very good match. If this had been on any other show, this probably would have been the match of the night. But because of where it was, uh, it's in my top four. That's how good this match was. This was just a really good match. Um, Abushi hit the Phoenix Splash to put Cody away to get the win. A really good match. This it it it, it just got put in a weird position card wise as the third match, but it was still a very good match. I really enjoyed this. I gave this match a B plus. CBS Sports gave this an A-. Uh, you could go either way with this match. It, it was just a real good match. Um, 
I think that's going to be a match that's going to fly under the radar as far as um, best matches from this event. I, I really think that's how it'll be. Then we had the IWGP Tag Team titles, uh, Killer Elite Squad defending against Evil and Sonata, and Lance Archer probably became the most hated man in Japan during this, en- or at least during the entrance, because he had like two or three bottles of water, and he was just throwing the water all over everybody and getting the people wet. Story of the match here is uh, Archer and Davy Boy are just beating up Evil and Sonata. They're just beating the crap out of them. They're beating the snot out of them. And at one point, they're attacking the young boys out at ringside. They're showing no remorse whatsoever in this match. And they're just taking it to Evil and to Sonata. And... Then, towards the end of the match, Sonata and Evil, they start to make a comeback, and it ends up where Sonata hit a moonsault, and it was a very good-looking moonsault, and they got the three count, and we have new IWGP Tag Team Champions in Evil and Sonata. So, if you have not kept up the count yet, three championship matches, three title changes. Let's see how this goes the rest of the night. Next match was the never open weight title, Minoru Suzuki defending against Hiroki Goto, with the stipulation that the loser of the match would lose their hair. Wow, was this match really good. Oh my gosh. And in the beginning of the match, the beginning of the match was so good because you know Suzuki and Goto they go at it in the beginning and then Suzuki takes Goto sits him or he's sitting on the top turnbuckle and he locks in a sleeper hold on the Goto and he's sort of hanging him with the sleeper hold and you know and it's sort of Ill- oh it is illegal because he's in the corner and Goto is out I mean, he is out of it. And the referee has to bring the doctor in. And the doctor checks him. And Suzuki's like, no, I'm not going to let... This match is not going to end this way. So Goto continues the onslaught, beating on Goto. But Goto does manage to make a bit of a comeback. And then, at one point, Suzuki hits this dropkick onto Goto. He hits this drop kick. I mean, it was square in the face. And it busts Goto's lip wide open. Like, he is bleeding from his mouth. Because of how hard the drop kick was by Suzuki. Eventually, members of Suzuki Goon would try to get involved in the match. The young boys would prevent them. Taichi managed to get an attempt in to sneak in on the Goto, but Yoshihashi made the save, taking him to the back. And then we just had really good, stiff wrestling the rest of the way. And Goto ends up hitting the GTR, and Goto wins the IWGP, or not the IWGP, pardon me, the Never Open Weight Championship. And because of the stipulation, Suzuki had to shave his hair. And Suzuki shaved his hair as only Minoru Suzuki can shave his hair. He grabs a chair, hits the chair that's in the ring with his chair to knock it out. He sits himself down and he starts to shave some of his hair off. Only as Minoru Suzuki could do. This was a really good match. Again, another example of If this match was on another show, this possibly would have been the match of the show. But it wasn't. I gave this a B+. CBS Sports gave this a B+. And for me, you know, up until the Suzuki Goto match, I was like, okay, this this is a good show so far. We got a good show going. This match changes 
the way the rest of the show goes. Because from Suzuki Goto all the way to the end, it is just absolute fantastic wrestling. Just fantastic stuff. And speaking of fantastic, the next match is the four-way match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. Hiromu Takahashi, Kushida, and Will Ospreay, the challengers, against the champion Marty Skull. Whew! Uh, what can I say about this match? Um, this was incredible. This was an unbelievable match. These four guys stole the show. They stole the show. Um, I mean, there were so many spots. I, I gotta mention a couple, or some of them. One of which... Osprey climbs one of the towers that hold, you know, that holds one of the uh, the sets. I, I think it's to the the screen that they had in the arena, and and the and the screen that they had for this one was just a big ring, sort of like you know the rings of Saturn. Osprey hits a moon salt off from the tower. He must have been about five additional feet off the ground. On to all three men. And he lands perfectly. Then we have... These bumps. These dives. Osprey... It looked like at one point... Might have hurt his arm when he got out of a... Triangle choke from Kushida. Skrull... Grabs a bag full of tape. And he tapes... Takahashi to the railing. And he tries to keep him out of the match. And then he finds... You know, powdered salt, and he throws it into the face of Kushida, and he can only get a two count. And it's just such an unbelievable match. It was back and forth. You have to see this match to believe it. There's too many, there's just too many spots to remember from this match, but it was so damn good. It really was. Um,. I knew it was going to be good, but this was way better than I thought it was going to be. I gave this an A+. CBS Sports gave this an A-. This was an absolute outstanding match. Just absolutely incredible. Uh, Next match was Jay White challenging Hiroshi Tanahashi for the Intercontinental title. They did the best that they could. Um, uh, especially with what the previous match was. And it told a good story, I thought. The story was Jay White going after the injured body parts of Hiroshi Tanahashi. Basically, the knee and the arm, the elbow of Tanahashi. And... It was... It was a good match. I'm not gonna say it was great, but it was a good match... Um, Jay White hit a brain buster on the apron at one point, which looked pretty good. Um, but Tanahashi managed to, in the end, get himself back together, hit the high fly flow, and was able to retain the Intercontinental title. I gave this match a B because I thought it told a good story, um... And yeah, the fans probably were a little bit out of it after that junior heavyweight title match, but, you know, you can blame them. Um, CBS Sports gave this one a C, so. And then we have the first half of the double main event, um, which was Chris Jericho against Kenny Omega for the IWGP United States Championship a no disqualification match and it's sort of like what Fro and I we had the discussion of when this match was announced in that if you lived outside of Japan or if you aren't as well aware of New Japan as others are this was the main event of the show These two delivered on this match. 
I mean, everyone just had the expectation. Jericho and Omega, it's going to be an unbelievable match. It's going to blow the roof off. It's going to be absolutely crazy. And it was. Now, I had reserve expectations for this match. I, I had reserved expectations. I thought this was going to be a good match. I just didn't think it was going to be the greatest match of all time. This was this was a very good match. This would be my number two. This would be my, you know, if I did, you know, if I did the whole oh one through nine, this was my number two match. This was a very good match. Told a very good story. Jericho was absolutely fantastic as a heel in this match, and you could tell he was being the heel in the match. Um. Again, just like the junior heavyweight title match, there are just too many spots to mention, but I'll try to give you the best that I could. Omega does a dive early in the match on the Jericho. And Omega just goes right through the English announce table. I know that's a little weird for me to say, but it it happened. Um, Jericho starts beating up everybody. The referee, the young boys, anyone that was in his way. Jericho was being a fantastic heel in this match. Um, You just had chaos all around. And it told a very good story. Omega gets busted open with a couple of chair shots to the head. Which one of them looked really scary. Uh, Jericho ends up going through the table at one point from a drop kick by Omega. It was just very good, very stiff. It went, I believe, over a half hour. Omega was able to hit the one wing angel two times. The second time was on a chair, and that is what put Jericho away for good. Omega won, still the United States champion, in a very, very good match. Thought it told a very good story. I really did. I gave this an A+. So we have a show with two A plus matches. That's a, that's incredible. Um, CBS Sports gave this an A minus. And then we go to the main event, uh, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Tetsuya Naito against Kazuchika Okada. Um, again, this was sort of in a situation just like. White and Tanahashi, where they had to follow a a really good match, but they kept their own pace. They kept to a very good match, I thought. Um, No sneaky moves by either man. They were trying to go for the win. Very well told. A very good story was brought into this match. Uh, Naito hit his finishing move, Destino, a couple times. Couldn't really get it. And when he tried to hit them, they'd be countered in the in the tombstones or close to tombstones by Okada. Um, and then Okada, in the end, hits the Rainmaker on Naito to get the three count and the victory. And he hit um, the Rainmaker three times, and the third time was the one that was able to put o- or put Naito away, and Okada. Retain the IWGP heavyweight title. I was surprised. Before I get my uh, my grade for this match. I was surprised that Okada won that match. I'm not disappointed. I was just surprised. I thought. You know. Naito. He's done everything. You know. Since, he, since the Los Ingobernables. Gimmick has begun. He won the G1. Okada's been champion a year and a half. It just felt right. It felt like the right time for Naito to win the title. And in the end, he does not do it. And once again, and this is a this is a stat that I want people to remember here. Ever since they brought in the stipulation of whoever wins the G1 challenges you know, or whoever has the briefcase for the right to challenge for the IWGP heavyweight title, every individual who has had that has failed. And Naito, for the second time, because he's had this before, has failed to successfully cash in 
and win the main event match at Wrestle Kingdom. I gave this an A. CBS Sports gave this an A as well. Overall thoughts on this show. This was a really, really good show. I think it's a little too early to say that this show was better than last year's because, you know, it's too early. I think it's too early to tell if this... You know, if this show was better than last year's Wrestle Kingdom, it it really is too early um, to tell. But this was a very good show. Um, there were one or two matches that were meh, you know, but but it didn't hurt the show. It it really didn't hurt the show that much. Uh, I thought the for the majority of the matches, I thought they were very good. Um, I think Abushi and Cody is going to fly under the radar as a match of the night candidate. I thought it was a really good match. Um, probably Cody's best match since he has left WWE. That's how good that match was. And I think Kota Ibushi needed to have that kind of match where he could you know, show that he belongs with the big guys, and he had that performance in this match. I really liked the opening match, Sho and Yo and the Young Bucks. I thought that set the tempo, that set the pace for the night. Um, Suzuki and Goto was another great match. I just really enjoyed that match. Um, The four-way match stole the show for me was absolutely impressed by all four of those guys. I would watch those four face each other again in a heartbeat. Uh, Jericho and Omega, they went past the expectation that I had had for this match. Tanahashi and White did a good job. Everybody did a good job. I would give this show a big, big thumbs up. Uh, I'd give us an A grading. Um, and, 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 and... The difference, I think, between this show and a WrestleMania is how here they, you know, they are showing the wrestling, whereas WrestleMania is more of an entertainment product. But they do have good quality matches. Um... So, now we're sort of in a situation, and it's going to be this way for the next several years, where it's like, okay, WrestleMania, let's see what you could do. Let's see you top New Japan. Let's see you top Wrestle Kingdom. So, all in all, very good show. I would definitely recommend it to those who did not watch it or are interested in it. So, I would definitely recommend Wrestle Kingdom 12 for everybody to check out. Uh, Real quick, uh, I did not forget, I did want to mention uh, our trivia winner from uh, the last episode, Jason Richardson. He won. Uh, He got the answer right. The question was, who was the ring announcer for Victory Road 2004? The answer was Jeremy Borash. So, Jason, I'm going to write your name down. And as I am doing that, just want to let everyone know that the trivia will come back next week uh, as Fro will return. He, Like I said, he had to do some work that was out of my hands. Uh, so he will return next week. And we got a lo- we, we have a loaded show next week. But before we get... But before I get to that, uh, let's do the quick plugs. You can follow the show on Twitter. Twitter at Wrestling Show 11. You can join our Facebook group. It is That Wrestling Show Fan Club. Just type that in in the search bar on Facebook. You are right there. And if you can't find it for some odd reason, and I don't know how you wouldn't be able to find it, click on the link in the description box and you are right there. Don't forget to visit the website, thatwrestlingshow.com. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Bill's World of Podcasts. 
Uh, don't forget to visit w2mnet.com where you can check out not only this podcast but other wrestling podcasts along with sports, entertainment, and video game podcasts. And I'm going to give the quick plug again. If you want to catch me, if you want to follow me on Stardust, just download it on your smartphone. I am bobull04. That's B-O-B-U-L-L-0-4. Next week on this show, it is the third annual That Wrestling Award Show. We will be handing out awards in the categories that you, the fans, have voted on. There is still time to vote, folks. If you have not voted, that's why you should join our Facebook group. Um, you have less than a week to vote. And we'll announce the winners in all the categories next week on this very show. So you might want to tune in for that. Uh, plus, we'll have more wrestling news stories. Um, another round of trivia. I am sure we're going to have that. And... We're actually going to start next week. Going to discuss a very interesting topic because if you don't have the WWE Network, uh, this month they are ranking the top 100 moments in the history of Monday Night Raw. And right now they have 100 through 26. So next week, Fro and I, we're going to discuss moments 100 to 51. Because in two weeks, when we discuss the the 25th anniversary of Monday Night Raw and everything that goes into Monday Night Raw, we will discuss 50 to number 1. And I have actually seen, like, I I didn't watch the clips, but I've seen what's on the list. I don't know if you guys are going to be disappointed or shocked or... Whatever. It just will be. Will be. K sera sera. Hope you all have a good weekend. If you're uh, in the New England area or here in a minute Atlantic and uh, you are surviving this really cold weather, please stay warm this weekend. Um, but to everyone, have a good, safe weekend, no matter what it is that you do. Come back here next week for the third annual That Wrestling Award Show. Until then, I am Bill. This has been That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. And as always, wrestle on.